It is the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to How You Know. Yo. The podcast, the radio show, whatever you want to call it, that tries to start at 1 o'clock but always runs into technical difficulties. You I'm know also what? Titan, man. And you got. Okay, well, fish. okay, go ahead, go ahead, go no, ahead. No, no, fine. You got here, it. No, you got you it. Go. No, you go, you go. No, you got it. No, no, you no, no, no. Oh, I want you to go. I want you to go oh, ahead. Thanks, I thanks. promise you. Here's my co-host, Jared. Hart. No, give yourself the proper introduction that you deserve because you work is, hard uh, to have this job, and Austin I want Ty- you to have it. He still tells her, Austin Titel. Here's my no, co-host. no. Okay, okay. Start Jared over. Ar- no, start over. Start over. I promise you, I won't speak. Go ahead from the beginning. Go. My name is Austin Titel. Here comes. Oh, there's Peter. Peter, there he is. I'm Austin Titan. Here is my co-host with the most, J Harvin 15. What's up, everybody? It's Jared Harvin, your boy, coming at you live in action with the curiosity. We have to ask these questions, people. We got to get down to the brass tacks of it. How you know is coming at you with the most, the most questions you have ever, you have ever seen since you took the Regents and your sweaty <laughs> high school gym. With us is always my boy. The producer, Peter Lewis. Not Louis. You can't say <laughs> Louis. It's Peter Lewis. All right. Get it right, everybody. Happy Chinese New Year. You missed uh, it. I, I you missed I, Chinese I, New I Year. I did miss it because I had to help my family member out with something special. But I did I did text Peter and I told him uh, I told him Happy New Year. I, I forgot how to say it. I'm not gonna do it right now because if it comes out it might be a little bit racist. But I I, I his sister it said won't be. His sister said that I said it correctly. You're talking to his sister? No, 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 no. I, I sent him a voice message, and his sister uh, heard it. She overheard it, and she was like, oh, that was pretty good. And I was like, you should play I it. got it. You should play the voice message. I was like, I got it. Call me James Carter because this man is my brother. Okay? <laughs> That's, that, you know, I'm I, I'm a little unfortunate. What did you guys have uh, at I, the dinner? Any, everything we had, I couldn't pronounce. Honestly. Well, but okay, Peter, what did Chef Wei Tong make for the dinner? I say it fast because I think canceled. you're supposed to do it like canceled. that. Canceled. No, I didn't say what that said. Canceled. It's you, you said it's canceled. All right, so Goodbye. We had fish. We had I think it was poached sea bass. I ordered like four of them the week before. So we had those and it was good. Austin liked it. We had soy sauce chicken. We had some of the, the beef with the tendon in it. And the roast pork and the, the mushroom dish that I'm not a big fan of, but Austin loved it. I loved it. My uh, my dad threw it out. He he did not like it. I go, he, but he liked like, mushrooms. I love mushrooms. King mushrooms, those are fire. Dude. They were dope. Those are fun. Now, did your father make any kafilta fish to accommodate Austin? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, Austin, uh, he's not. Maybe a little low main kukul? No? You know he's what? not very kosher. I'm, I'm going to say I'm kind of happy Jared didn't show up because I was able to go to the store and only spend like eight bucks on sake. This guy. I was pretty happy. First of all, this guy was complaining about, well, why can I have something to bring? And he literally brings something that every white person in America drinks when Wait, they want to have a cool Friday night I got to tell you something. This, you, you thought this guy wanted to bring a ninja star like to, to, <laughs> to the dinner. You thought he wanted to bring a whole katana sword that that was that was used in, to cut somebody's eye out because the Hammurabi code was still around. You thought like you this guy wanted to get so in depth with the gift that he wanted to become part of the family and he wanted to perform. Oh, no, that uh, excuse me, that's Japanese. I was gonna say Bushido sure. with the samurai when they canceled. When they, when they, I'm not. No, no. I I checked myself. <laughs> if anything, I canceled myself out. I am an integer. All right. So don't like. This guy just wants to bring sake. You were talking you were talking about rice wine. That's what it everything. is. That's what they said. The guy that's what Peter said. Peter said, All right, let me tell you. I brought I brought sake yeah, thinking it was the right the right thing to bring. It's not that I brought the wrong thing, but <laughs> I bring it and I and I show his dad. His dad goes, What are we, Japanese? <laughs> so that's that's strike one, right? The second strike was that I only bought it because the bottle looked cool. And guess where it's brewed? <laughs> guess where the sake's brewed? Or distilled, whatever. This is probably like in East Hampton or something like that. In the USA. So I brought for Chinese New Year a sake that's Japanese made from America. <laughs> it was only $8, so it was okay. No, I was with him. I was with yeah, my lamplighter. Peter's great. Peter's great. He's store. like, yeah, this this would be fine. It's the only rice one they have. Failure. You know, they don't have it, so like we understand. How know? sketchy was that? I didn't like that. I couldn't walk in. You can't walk into a liquor store now. What? The guy had it a board up. He's like, I want to look at sake. So he brings me like three different sake. And I want to walk around and peruse around and see stuff. 
And that guy was a weirdo. The guy knew way too much about sake. I mean, you know, he works, that guy, at, that guy he works wor- at a, a liquor and wine store. Yeah, but that dude. kid was like 18. Like, why do you know this much about sake? You have to like there's not 14-year-olds laying on the ground because they just inhaled four, four locals, dude. Like, <laughs> th- you know this is this, what in high school these kids go out. They drink. They're, they're doing the nasty under the football bleachers. I mean, it, for it will be a disservice for you not to know about alcohol at a yeah. young age. They're supposed to know, like the how you know. store, you know, like how know. you know, but you know, like some of these kids, the, the formula that their mother gave them when they were babies, it was mis- mixed with whiskey, dude. How no, my it? my sister was it's teething. Pedi- it's Pedialyte Jack Daniels. That's what. That's the second part of the name that they don't include. How come you didn't invite J- Jair? Oh, speaking of Jair. <laughs> Speaking of Why Jair, don't you invite Jair? Why let's don't you get invite our daily call ins, man. You know, we miss our guy Jair. Uh, he's been doing a lot of work. He's been doing good work at uh, Trader, Trader Joe's. Joe's in Bronx. He's been stacking that inventory, making sure everybody has their Dunkaroos. So let's give a call in to our boy Jair Iwa. Uh, people at home, he odds, is getting his hair braided, uh, so do not judge the way he looks. Doesn't pick up. My man got his oh, hair braided. Look at that. Say what up to the people. Gold chain. Yo. Is it chain on? Gold chain? You got, you got a gold chain on? All right, finish the, Why in every TikTok finish the Mandarin he oranges. Naked. Finish the Mandarin oranges and pineapples, then talk to us now. Are those snacks on the table? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> we got a budget now. I see. I see the snacks on the table. Uh, that, that's just just uh, that's just uh, the set. It's How you a prop? Know? How you know? It's a prop, yeah. Prop, we prop. live, man. We live. Let us know what's going on in the week, man. What's going on with you? Shout out to the people. Shout I didn't out to the. Answer my text message. That's why I'm not there again. I'm gonna look through my. I'm gonna look at my text message right now, and I bet you he he, he never texted Listen, me. Guys, I miss you guys, but uh, Austin said you want to come. I said yes. I respond the same minute or the next minute, and he didn't text me back again. Okay, la- last again. thing I texted you was January 26. I actually, yeah, January 26. I said join the Discord, and did he answer? No. And the day before that, January 20th, I said yo. He said yo. I didn't send him anything back, but it was nothing about it. I don't okay, know what so he's talking about. Why don't you stop making TikToks with your shirt off, and maybe an- maybe you should answer some texts. Mm. Okay, but that don't say that over the air. You said you were going to go live soon, and, I, and you said yo, and I said yo, and you didn't text back. I didn't, you didn't, I never texted her going live soon. I texted you yo, and that was it. I texted yo back when you said we're going live. What time was it? What time was it then? One thirty nine. Exactly. Before the uh, <laughs> I up. <laughs> I see. I see what happened. I, I, you know what? All right, man. Austin messed up. Tell him, he texted me. Tell me what's going on. I said the show. LOL. Jared didn't say he wasn't coming. I never said he wasn't. I'm saying you have to link. Go ahead, and give that quote for the day. The quote of the day is. I'm sorry. The people you're working with. Could be your best friends and worst enemies. Mm. Listen, that's my so that's my fault. Allow your back to turn back to the person behind you if the person behind you has a knife that can stab you in the front. How you know? Can we can we get a how you know? That that I think that might be the Helen Keller of quotes because <laughs> you you had everything going for you, but hey. you're missing key aspects. <laughs> all right, that just made that quote harder for people to understand. I want you to know that. No, 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 no. Get, that, get, that, get him out of here. What I need here. you to do is blow your nose, please. Please blow your nose. Put your shirt on. You got a little bit. You got a little bit of. The, you got a little bit of the uh, dingleberry hanging out. Put all your right. shirt on. Also, no, don't, don't you hang out with your chest. All right, because Jaya's doing his push-ups. I'm doing my push-ups. We're getting our body rights for the summer. Um, so that's what we need to do. Is there anything you want to talk about? Uh, what's going on at Trader Joe's? Is, is there anything you want to talk about with your 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 your, your mom in the situation? How's that? Going on how's that TV going? Yo yo yo! yo <laughs> don't sit over the air yet. Is there anything you want to talk about, man? Listen, I'm on a one way road, and, and I might have to make a U turn on this. One. Okay, you know what? All right, all right. Goodbye, goodbye. That's goodbye. a good quote. I'm on a one way road. I better make a U turn. <laughs> But if you're on a one, one-way road, how are you going to make that, a U-turn? That's, <laughs> no, that's the point. He's in a really bad situation. This guy. He, he was between a rock and a hard place. He says things <laughs> that only make Just sense like, uh, to Charlie Matt. Sheen and Gary Busey. Um, guys, uh, we're, we're coming at you with the, with the, with the new with, with this, these questions, man. Uh, have that curiosity in your back pocket. We got the see. intros going on, man. Um, 
we got to get into this uh, weekend recap. Uh, you know what it is, man. We give a recap of our week. We give three things that we did. Uh, two of them are truth, and one of them's a lie. We have to sit here and decipher which one is the cap, and nice. which one is the truth. Now, I believe it's Austin. Now, Austin right, I'm couldn't prepared. do the show last I'm week. I'm prepared. I'm Austin prepared. didn't do the show last week because he had to go into the city. He had a little excursion, a little bit of an e- escapade, if you will. He had to get into it, and, and, he, and he did what he had to do. So, Austin, wh- 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 how was your week? Is it not my cap this time? or No, it's me. Okay. It's me. I prepared this time. He's prepared. I prepared you, this time. So did I. And, you know, you I, did? Yeah, so... Because I thought uh, it was you after me, and then Jared, or vice versa, and then... Listen, Peter, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm a little discombobulated. It might have been you, but the last time I was me, I, re- I thought it was you before that, and now I'm just going to put it on Austin, but this guy's been doing big things, so, you know, I wanted I wanted go, a little brain... <laughs> oh, he said, oh, go, I wanted go, a little go, brain go. teaser, you go. man. You want me to go? Yeah, I'll at me. You. I'll at me. Go. All right, so, okay, my weekly recap. Here's one... Here we go. First time eating Shake Shack. Finally got a condition check for $300 that I was owed. And got a free picture of a bunch of Amish kids giving the middle finger. I'll say it again. This week, my weekly recap. First time eating Shake Shack. Finally got a condition check for $300. And got a free picture of Amish kids giving the middle finger. Which one is the cap? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm gonna say the Shake Shack one. Why don't you guys talk about it? So. All right. So, being that we both know where he is, Jared, where, where he was in the past week, I'm gonna say that I feel like the picture of the Amish kids makes sense to me, based on what I know and what you know. Okay. What do you know about the Amish kids? Because what uh, do you know about the Amish? Where kids? he was visiting his excursions, you were talking about. Where where, where was his excursions? I don't know. Don't don't say the place, but you can say by by Penn. Just yeah, by Penn Station. Yeah, that that place by Penn Station. Oh, okay. So okay. I, you know, comedy kind of place, and I figured. Listen, you know what? I'm feeling a little shaky on the last one because it is called Pennsylvania Station, but it's not Pennsylvania State, which Amish do come from, okay? <laughs> That's a good connection. Uh, so, good. like, he, he, he thought he could pull a fast one on me with that one, but I'm not I'm not falling for it just yet. Now, Austin has never talked about Shake Shack before, but due to the fact that we are in Bumble, you know what, right now, and there's nothing around here except probably for the body of Jimmy Hoffa, it's you, definitely here. We, it's definitely around the we corner. Would have, we would have to consider that someone who frequents the city that doesn't, you know, get into a lot of, you know, the, 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 his, his, his taste is usually um, satisfied because his mother's a good cook. She's Puerto Rican, okay? You know, she, she cooks. She does what she has to do. Um, so for me to say that's the first time having Shake Shack, I would, uh, I would agree with that. Because even me, someone that frequents the city a lot, I didn't really eat Shake Shack that much. So I would believe that. Uh, $300 check. Austin doesn't play when it comes to his money. The guy wants to finance a laptop. He wants to put a down payment on a laptop. He wants it like a mortgage. Okay, he's paying $15 a month for a laptop. It's not going to be paid off till he's the age of 39. So this guy, this guy, he really cares about his money. So I could believe about the $300. Now, what tricks me is the Amish thing is a little outlandish. I prepared. It's a little outlandish. I'm going to tell you that, Peter. But is it so outlandish to the fact that it's outside of his means? Yeah, that's what I'm saying here. He got a free pic. <laughs> he got a free picture. Amish don't care about money. <laughs> but then again, when's the last time you seen an Amish model? When's the last time you seen an Amish model splitting her cheeks for the gram? We all know that she can't. She wears black and stuff. She can't even wear anything. Now the Amish get a year off to go into the world and explore. So New York City would be a marquee place for them to go visit. It's not too far from the hills of Pennsylvania, where you're rolling around in the yeah. hay and play fighting your sister or whatever you do for fun out there reading huckleberry finn but when's the last time you've seen some amish cleavage on the gram when's I mean, the last time you've seen an amish person do the silhouette challenge on tiktok peter think was, about that there was that in in amish paradise the music video you know by weird al they did have like that naughty magazine that was like an amish magazine so i don't i mean what's she doing covering her breast with some po- poison ivy <laughs> No, I think it was like the leg, whatever. But that was it. No, I, I mean the. I because I Austin, have you never what? been to City Field before? I've been to City Field before. I feel like he's had to have Shake Shack there. 
Yeah, but who's gonna buy? No one. I don't buy food at the baseball listen, game. Listen, I all, food in. A lot of people Wait, do. Going well, back, those people are stupid. Austin, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Austin, not broke. You all buy, right. you buy food at City Field. We all do. Yeah. Why? It's such a rip off. Austin, like, Austin, Austin is not broke. All right. The brother has some money coming into him, but he's he's smart with his money. Now I agree with him when he's saying because. When I would go to the Knicks games with my dad, I would not buy nothing in that store. The only thing that he would get was a, was a cotton candy and the steak sandwiches because those steak sandwiches were bomb and they were twenty dollars, which is pretty oh good for MSG. God. And they were were they worth it? No, yeah, they're they're worth no, it. They, they were, but I'm not paying eighteen dollars for a hot dog. Well, they don't charge that and at also, City Field. And also, and MSG also, maybe Shake Shack. Shake Shack is not so. I mean, they got Shake Shacks on Long Island, so they're not so scarce. The fact that you can't go to one. Yeah, Smithtown's the closest one. Smithtown, they have one. In, they have one or in uh, Huntington and Far- Farmingdale on the border that Melville. So it's not like I mean, that's the only Shake Shack you're gonna get. So I exactly. don't think he would pay money. I mean, he may get popcorn, but I don't think he would pay money in a in a, in a city field to get a Shake Shack. So you know what, man? If I I can understand if number three is the truth because it's so outlandish, but I feel like in my head I've justified enough where I, if I get it wrong, I'm gonna be okay with it. So I'm gonna go number three, Peter. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Okay. What are you I thinking, know. Peter? Well, I mean the fact that you know they they could just have models dress up as Amish people and do that. Um, I'm going to go with one. What? Okay. I'm just going to throw this out. I'm going to throw this out. Austin always gets mad at me because I changed the amount. Because what the, he said, oh, I got $300. He probably maybe got $200 and he probably upped the price. Because he, no, you know, he always gets mad at no, me when I I'm do not, something like I'm that. I'm not doing, I told you, I'm not doing that stupid stuff. Okay. You guys do that. Okay. I, I'm not doing that. All right. So, Austin, let us know. Man. So you say one, you say three. Mm-hmm. You are both wrong. Wow. The company... Some company out there, I'm not going to say who, I've been waiting for a $300 commission check. It's been two months. I got an email today as a follow-up saying that they've started the investigation on where my $300 is. So I woke up to that, and I'm very pissed because that $300 is going to go straight to buying the camera. And uh, if I have to go to the place to go pick it up myself, I will go pick it up. First time eating Shake Shack, no, I, this was like maybe the second or third time, but I went to the original Shake Shack in uh, Madison, uh, by uh, Madison Avenue, the original Madison one. Madison Square Park? Yeah, Madison Square Park. That's where the original Shake Shack was. It's actually it's the a best shack. One. And it was awesome. We ate, uh, the guy I was working for, he bought us lunch, and we ate like real New Yorkers right next to a homeless guy and uh, a bunch of birds. Right in the park, I uh, got a burger. It was a great burger. We were eating on the bench. It was perfect. The sun was in our eyes. It was awesome. Couldn't see anything. And the Amish ch- – dude, I, I'm picking up the Amish picture today. Yo, when you see this photo, it's got to be the funniest photo you've ever seen. It's like 10, four, it's like 10 uh, Amish kids, and they're looking at the camera. They're all giving the finger, bro. It is the funniest photo you're going to see. Dude, I'm going to frame that. I'm going to put it up here somewhere. I'm going to put it right on that wall. It is the funniest picture you're ever going to see. Just a bunch of Amish people giving the finger on the road. It's so funny. <laughs> all right. It's awesome. But you you had so your first time having Shake Shack that was true, yeah. Uh, no, he said he had so Shake was Shack your second time. He said he had Shake Shack, Shack three times before. He only had this Shake Shack now at this original location. So I I was supposed to write first time eating at the original Shake Shack. Okay. That's what uh, this guy I came prepared. He said he came prepared. I came prepared, and I missed the word. But he was but, as prepared as Conor McGregor was. But let versus me, Dustin Poirier. I but can tell let you that me much. tell you. When I show you this picture of this obvious kid, <laughs> you are going to laugh. Because it is so funny. Uh, oh, so I guess to technicality, yeah, I meant to say original Shake Shack. But no, I just want my money. Let's get into this news. Let's get into the news for the week. Guys, Texas. Mm. Eh, somebody needs to go down there and help Texas. This <laughs> storm, I don't know what's going on with Mother Nature. I'm not sure if her kids pissed her off. She's been working a nine to five. She comes home. The house is not clean. The kitchen is not clean. She is throwing a fit, but Mother Nature is throwing some punches that cannot be deflected. Dude, the amount of snow in Texas, it's nothing to us, but it's everything to them. They don't have sand. They don't have road plows. There was a half a mile car pile up on the interstate outside of Fort Worth because of black ice. (laughs) Because of black ice. Dude, they don't have any power. I like I uh, I I have my um my cousin lives in Fort Worth in Dallas. She she works at a a, a COVID uh, testing site. Mm. Dude, the night that the uh, the night before the black ice, I called her 
and she was literally on her phone. The phone was up in one hand, and she was looking at the road all hectic. And I was like, hey, you know, you should probably invest in, like, one of those phone holders. As soon as she said that, the connection got – it went literally went like that. I said, I got to call you back. And I, that's all I heard, and the line hung up. I haven't heard from her for 48 hours. <laughs> 48 oh. hours. I call her back. She's in our apartment. No lights on. She's stirring over her pot. She's like, oh, I'm just going to make myself some Rotel. I was like, what the hell is going on here, guys? Texas – it's bad out there. All those guns, and they have no one has a, a snow. Shot. All those guns. It's like how, how do you know? Imagine that, how do you know you're prepared? How do you how do you, how can you say you're the best state? How do you know that? They are definitely fighting the snow. Like, they were trying to shoot the snow. We gotta get the snow out of here. Imagine they were trying. <laughs> they, shooting the snow. they were trying to handle the snow like how cowboys used to handle it. You can walk around. Yeah. You, you can walk around Texas right now. You see wanted posters of snowflakes, snowflakes. on there. Three hundred thousand dollar reward. It is bad. The black in Texas. ice all around. How you how you want to succeed from the United States all those years back? You can't handle three inches of snow. Everything is bigger in Texas, right? Except for the coast. Y'all walk out there, your teeth start chattering, looking like Jack Nicholson in The Shining, all frozen in the snow. Can you can you imagine a rack of ribs in one hand, a gun in the other? Imagine you go outside, you see someone frozen on that front lawn like that. What's going on, Texas? Can you uh, imagine the first time you see it snow and it was like a blizzard like that? You don't know what's going on. Like, they must have been freaked out. Not, been, dude, Jesus is coming. It's, Jesus. It's, it's not even a blizzard, though. It's, li- it's, it's literally three. It's, it's freezing. Uh, it's freezing roads, which is a problem everywhere, I guess. They don't have salt. They don't have sand. They don't have trucks out there to, p- to prepare for it. Oh, my and it's God. Literally, it's like three inches of snow. They had to call the janitors of Oneonta to do it. And <laughs> they have no power whatsoever. I know strippers in Houston that are literally clapping their cheeks just for warmth, the guy. <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're calling a, a jerk. And they're all clapping their cheeks. They're going up and down so they cause a vortex of hot air. Because there's a vortex of cold air going down in Texas from what I read. And that went over to North Carolina and South Carolina, caused some tornadoes. And it was looking like the Wizard of Oz. And three people are dead. All right. Mm-hmm. In California, in, uh, Carolina right now. They definitely thought Jesus was coming. They're like, the rapture, it's here. Dude, the, Texas is snowing. It's, it's here, it's here. I just, I just don't know. Y- y- I, y'all might have to go back to horses. <clears throat> You, you can't be oh, driving. Oh, you know. You know people are You can't be driving horses. your Ford F 150 and not being able to stop. All right. Now, imagine imagine that, that you just moved, right, that day from New York because it's snowing to Texas. And the day you move in, it's just blizzard. No, that actually, Can you imagine that actually, that? That actually happened to uh, one of my friends. She <laughs> she moved to uh, Texas. I'm for, done with New York. I hate the snow. One of my sisters, oh. one of my uh, my friend's sisters, she uh, moved to Texas. It was the day that the last big snow that we got. She was driving down to Texas. As soon as she got there, no lights, no power, no nothing. It's like, uh, I don't know what's going on, but we need to ship some things down to Texas. The only thing that they can hold pride and true to their heart is their brisket because you don't need electricity to cook brisket. You just need a fire and a pit and Luka Donacic. If either of those things leave Texas right now, Texas is a wasteland. Nothing, it, 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 dude, it's, it's gone. It, it's literally gone. No, nothing's popping off. Joe Rogan is, is his podcast has stopped in that little cabin that he's doing. Dude, the spaceship. Is like, everything this. is shut down. You can't buy a gun. You can't. You can't kick out an undocumented immigrant. You can't do nothing in tech. Like everything is all you, the fun stuff you can't do. You can't all the all the things that you enjoy. You can't even. Dude, you you can't. You, you can't even call the cops on a young black man <laughs> in a grocery store. You can't even follow him around in that grocery store no. because the grocery store is closed, dude. This, what do three, you think? Three inches of snow. What do you think they, they were doing with no power? This is probably the first thing they ever lost big power like this. I'm telling you, they're the G, the Jesus freaks. They definitely are like, this is the rapture. It's here. It's coming. And I could just imagine your friend that moved from New York to Texas in the snows there. I would want my my money back for the it's house like, when dude, I bought how, a house. I want how my money you back. know you the you one of the best and baddest states in the United States, and you can't even handle three inches of snow. Your your lights turn out because of three inches of snow. I got three inches of snow. I got to be to work 15 minutes early. I'm surprised Germany did, didn't come in and try to take over Texas. It's our time. Let's go. Three inches take of it snow. over. I still got to throw out the garbage. I still, still got to do regular things. Still like, got to drive here. <laughs> yeah, just knowing. Jared, uh, can you? I got to <laughs> drive here, deer in the middle of the road, thinking it's Narnia outside. <laughs> like, dude, I still got to go on with life, guy. I still got to be my own self. 
but no, no, not in Texas. Not in Texas. You go down yeah. to Texas, it's, mm-hmm. it's a different. It's a different rules down there, man. Yeah, you see that uh, Dave Chappelle and all those guys all got COVID after a <laughs> after oh, a, a show. Yeah, he he got that, but he, he's back up on his feet, man. Yeah, he, Dave Chappelle, he he got his money from uh, Comedy Central, yeah. so things things will get better. But somebody send yeah, some help Canadian. down to Texas. Let's get some Canadian brothers down there, so you know they can teach them how to be happy in the snow. Have some seminars or how you could, right. you know, and like let's get I just mean, the only the only there. people the only people that were happy it snowed are the Russians that play for the uh, Dallas team. You get some Russians down there. I, there's obviously. also Canadians though. There's also I was gonna say a lot of Canadians on the Stars. You know. Oh, thank thank you. Brett Hull uh, has a steakhouse in Dallas. Everyone Who's wants that? to go to it. Brett Hull, the the really famous hockey player. His father was Bobby, and, and they're both like amazing players and. Uh, Brett won the cup with Dallas in '99. I like it. This is a sports show. We're just like, well, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> this is the sports show. Who's he's a that fam- sport. He's a famous guy, a very famous player. But um, for hockey, yeah. Okay. Well, that's but like, fine. He, we don't talk about that. Yeah, exactly. USA. It's, it's ESPN. USA, USA. It's ESPN here. You know, <laughs> no hockey. We're, worldwide but, sports. Right now. <laughs> Follow us. On yeah, I mean, uh, but like northern and western Texas, they do get snow during the year, but like around Dallas and stuff. This is like an abna- abnormal snowstorm, like mm-hmm. how much they have and the power's out and stuff, and it's all chaos down there. Like, one of my friends is like, uh, he, he knows Frank and all that. He's like RVing around the country, and he's in Texas right now, and like, it's like snowing. Like, he, he put he put up a picture, just like, I never thought I'd be this excited to see a, a 7-Eleven cheeseburger. F snow. I wonder if uh, people, yeah, like New Yorkers, like, all right, I'm going to get my money's worth to go get snow plows. How much as a Texan are you paying someone to plow your your... Your road. I'm not Jeez. sure. I'm not sure what part of that sentence scares me the most. The fact that somebody would RV through Texas, or the fact that somebody mm. would buy a cheeseburger from Seven Eleven. I'm not someone friends with Peter. It's, that's like, it's the end times. It's the end times, dude. It's the end times for your large intestine. Okay, because if you have that burger, I can tell you right now, Peter. You don't have to worry about having an RV that you can drive <laughs> around. That RV will literally disintegrate because when you flush the toilet, it will blow up. All oh, right, I, I believe it. A Seven Eleven. I can't even have a Seven Eleven banana without the left side of my body going limp. You, you buy not, fruit at Seven Eleven? No, I, I I'll get nuts from Seven Eleven, planters, what what not, anything else from Seven Eleven except for a cold drink. I'm not. What about a hot dog? Those hot dogs are okay. What? No, the hot I'm, dogs. Not, I'm not. Not. I'm not getting that taquito. No, I don't get the taquitos, Peter. Anything that wrote. Anything that rotates Shout on out. metal like that, I'm not. I'm good. Uh, I'm. I'm straight off. Yeah, but I will say that the Seven Elevens in other countries, like Korea, they're really cool. Like they're like actual, like kind of like mini, you know, grocery store. We should markets. do a show live there. We should live go, in we Korea. Seven Eleven and the Seven Eleven in Seoul Airport <laughs> in Korea. <laughs> no, I mean that would be cool. Remember but, when I brought uh, Korean stuff to Chinese New Year? I don't remember that. I remember you bringing a Japanese sake. Oh, and I'm going to get canceled, but this guy can't even get his countries right. Guys, you No, know I what, told man? him to do it. <laughs> he set me up. He set me up. Peter loves setting me up. You know, I bought you a jersey. No, he knew He knew it was it was Japanese. I said, <laughs> I, it's okay. We're going to understand. It's I all they Peter, have. It was his birthday the, the other day, so I bought Peter an Islanders jersey, and I put it in a Paw Patrol bag. <laughs> <laughs> the show Paw Patrol. That's, that's actually disrespectful. I love it. I love and I, and I asked him where he got it from, and he said, uh, that, that's a long Your story. <laughs> Man, yeah, man, mother. man! These cultures, man. Um, let's let's just hope people in Texas get okay. I try to call my try to call my cousin. She didn't answer, but let's let's get it back. He's just like the the, the arrogance the, the arrogance of people in Texas. You guys <laughs> go around acting like you're all big and bad, and now you can't even wear your cowboy hat because it's flipped down. You look, they're probably with all the snow and the, the with the amount of snow on the brim of their hat, it's literally flipped down now. And they probably look like they're from Australia, and you know people from Texas hate Australians or anything that <laughs> you know or, that could rival a, that's them. That's a perfect sketch any, right now. Anything with any person that has an accent that could be as thick as Texans, you know they hate them. <laughs> the only right? person, the only Texan that was prepared for snow was Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what. That's one. exactly what Texas needs now. She Get them a big dome where you can have a controlled environment. Because unless it's about tech, unless it's about football, you're not going to find a dome in Texas, and they need a whole dome over Texas so they can have their football, their barbecue, and their strip clubs open. Because guys, it's bad in Texas. You right know, now. you know, people were firing guns. You know, people were like, "We're we're gonna we're gonna kill this thing. We're gonna kill these clouds. It's over. It's over." Mm-hmm. Just to, imagine mm-hmm. like being a Texan and it's a blizzard outside. You're like, all I have is shorts. 
<laughs> what? I don't have jeans. And you know, you know why the floor is so slippery in Texas because all that dip spit from the, yeah. from the chewing tobacco. They mm. spit it on the ground the night and over it froze over. And then boom, you busting your ass on your own spit. I wonder what the stores look like today. That's why the ice on the ground smelled like mint and whatnot, or whatever flavors <laughs> they got for the chewing Where's tobacco. The menthol. For the, <laughs> the, the menthol. You slipping on frozen menthol. It smells like cherry. Mm, it's all good. <laughs> That's why they want to stay when they fall. They want to stay on the ground because they, you know, the the, the tobacco in their head, yeah, they you know, the, they had they it. got a caffeine rush and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I don't have short like who snow boots. I don't know. Man. Uggs is making a killing. Timberland and Uggs are making a killing right now. <laughs> no, they, they, I don't. They, I don't think they're pop, those are two companies. Timberland is New York and that's foreign to Texas. Oh, what do you think they'll buy? And Ugg again, it's Australian, right? Oh, Ugg is Australian. I, I, they have Uggs Australia. I think they are from Australia. Yeah, and you know. Texas don't like Australia. So then they wear. They, they wear boot. They wear cowhide. They're no, they're from Cali. They're from Cali. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, they're, they're not. They're, they're, not, yeah, they're, they're, they're not like they're Cali. Not, they're not buying. Them. All the things. I don't know why people in Cali would need boot. I mean, well, it does snow there in the mountains, but yeah, in the north. The no, place no. where they need them the most, they're not being utilized. Guys, send Texas your love. Send Texas your help because these guys are on thin ice. You're gonna literally. They're on thin you're gonna, ice. You're going to start seeing... Uh, you know what they did originate in Australia, so you're, you're gonna, back to that. Sorry, you're going to see commercials like, for 10, for 10 cents a day, you can help Texas buy some boot snow boots. Shine them something, man. For 10 cents a day, you can have you can help Texas get to their mailbox so they have no snow shovels. Let's get them some ice melt, at least. <laughs> yeah, really. Mm. I ain't let no ice melt. Yep. I'm going to shoot it. Mm-mm. I'm going to shoot that snow out of here. And they start shooting. Get them some ice melt. Get the sun from Mexico. We need to import the sun. You know, give the sun a passport so it can come over the the border and shine on Texas. Because right now, guys, you need to loosen up your your, your uh, deportation laws. All right? You need to let that Mexican sun get up in there. Give you a little bit of shine. Give you a little bit of vitamin D. And you can send it back to Puerto Vallarta. But whatever you do, you need to accept this sun right now. This Mexican sun, you're going to need it, Texas. You are going to need it, man. But let's let, uh, praise up to people in Carolina, though, man. You know, three lives lost. Um, three people mm-hmm. have lost their lives. It's, it's was that the up. big car crash? Um, no, no, no. That was in Tex. Oh, people died in that Texas car crash. But in Carolina, the same weather uh, up front that caused the snow in Texas, it went to Carolina and caused mad uh, tornadoes, especially on the coast. And like three people passed away. Everything shut down mm-hmm. in Carolina right now, too. So, uh, you know, people say New York's bad. People say New look York- at us. People say New York's bad, um, but hopefully because it's the South, uh, businesses haven't been that devastated by COVID and like you know with the addition of the, of these uh, natural disasters. Hopefully it's not that bad. But guys, Texas, you're gonna have to shape yourself up. I don't want to hear all oh, we the best and baddest. No, you not. You got shut down by three inches of snow. All right, <laughs> three inches of snow. Which three inches? You could ask any woman around. Three inches isn't anything, okay? You know, so you know what's funny? It, you, they, you you got <laughs> you got to shape yourself up. You know, you know what's funny too? They probably have like uh, they have everybody has a truck in Texas, but they don't know how to drive it in the snow. They got these big giant trucks. They go, mama. Ah! I don't, <laughs> what would they call out for their yeah. mama. mama. <laughs> The people in Texas, you just audibly call out for your mama when you get behind the wheel. <laughs> mama! I can, oh I, I can tow seven tons of cow manure, but I can't damn near drive in the snow. People in Texas, how about you put on a Nike <laughs> yeah. free one shoe, take off the yeah. cowhide boot that's Bro 14 shed. sizes too big for you, take off the cowboy hat so there's nothing in your eyes, Turn down the Morgan Wallen so you can focus on the road oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, stop, yeah. okay? Just uh, stop. Hold on. Uh, this just in. We, we're getting boycotted in Texas. There is a uh, – we just lost our Texas audience. Ah, so sad. All three people in Texas. Thank you. Oh, we just lost them we because lost they them. passed away <laughs> on the freeway. <laughs> they were listening to us on the road, and they were laughing so – they were getting so bad about the snow. They turned in the other lane, and they, they're going to say the snow did it. The snow, the snow made me drive bad. Oh, man. Uh, prayers up to people in Texas, Carolina, though, man. Joe Rogan sponsor. Seriously, seriously. Uh, let's get into these sports stories, man, real quick. <laughs> the, the, main, the main thing. All right, we're going to go over sports. Uh, uh, real quick. Let's you want to take a break and then we get into sports? Uh, close out? Yeah, I guess so. Let's take a break. Right, right, go. I got to go to the bathroom. We'll be right back, people, with sports. You know how we do it, man. How you know. Keep it tuned in. We're going to come at you with some sports stories, with some curiosity. We're going to talk about something. Bang, bang. I'll put the border up. And how you know? 
It, it, it's the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Radio Network. Welcome back to How You Know. Uh, before we keep going, this one I gotta plug some. Gotta plug the app, yo. Uh, what is it? All right, WWSRN on iPhone. That's WWSRN on iPhone and World Wide Sports Radio Network on Android. Roar World Wide Sports Radio Network on Android. We actually got some people on Facebook commenting that guy CJ said that kid's hilarious. Which guy is it? Well, no, that that wasn't uh, CJ. Hold on. Oh, no, no, CJ, not not CJ. Who's the other guy? Said this kid's hilarious. Let's get, let's get let's here. get into this. Let's get into this. Let's shout out our fans. Yeah, let's for, shout out the fans. Uh, First time out. ever. Let's uh, okay. All right. Why is it Facebook never? You know what, Mark Zuckerberg? You know what makes me mad more than your robotic face? It, you 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 make this app so people can connect, and as soon as I want to look at something, yeah, I, like I can't it. find it. All right, I'll read some out. Yeah. CJ said, "What's good, fellas? He's on Weapons Hot." Yes, sir. What's good, yeah, CJ? Good, uh, good show. Weapons hot. Check that show out, man. The weapons. They don't have uh, actual hot. weapons, all right? So the NRA is not going to be up up on them. You know, the, the NRA moved out of New York, but the, when they, they got some hot takes, so you, you got you to gotta get up on that, all right? Get, they, listen to that uh, show. That, that's what Texas needs, some weapons hot. Uh, we got Declan. He said, this kid's hilarious. Which kid? I don't want to know. It don't matter, Declan. We appreciate you, man, for listening, man. Clarence says, what's up, fellas? What up? Oh, there I am. I'm streaming myself <laughs> over the radio, guys. Can you spell conceited? Because I can't, okay? Read the, read the oh, last that. comment, because I don't want to say his name wrong. Uh, Matthias? There we go. <laughs> we have a Greek god watching on our Facebook. <laughs> Matthias Simon, we had 30 Look inches of snow. Oh my god. We had, we had 30 inches of snow <laughs> with more coming to New Jersey. <laughs> I'm listening to your comments, and I'm also reading the banners you put up there. <laughs> Peter looks like a 57-year-old mother who doesn't know how to use Zoom. Guys, we're live, all right? That's funny. We got the... <laughs> I don't like who how said just, that? Who I said don't that? like he, I don't like how he just no, who put said the, that one I on? did but I don't like how you just flipped your hair <laughs> dude you up. dude I said dude I said he looks like a 57 year old mother he said that's funny that's I said all right that's funny. don't, don't. Hey, got here. <laughs> Peter Lewis, yeah. president, twenty twenty four. I was laughing at that one, <laughs> the other ones. Oh, well, I just get people listening. God. You know what it is? We might have, oh, we might have had that, but we were just like never monitor the Facebook, the Facebook. But yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, can you fix your Oculus? My nephew got the Oculus thing, and and it's made made by Facebook. And to buy the kid a game, you got to set up three different accounts to buy someone a game. What? Can you imagine you want to go, like, your grandma wants to go buy a game, and she got to sign up for Oculus. she got to sign up for, for the VR in her old folks' home. All she wants to do is buy her, her nephew a $15 Oculus game. And she got to make three accounts, Facebook, MySpace, YouTube. she got to make everything. doesn't make any sense. I thought makes it was no sense, the, yeah. I, I thought it was just the Oculus store or whatever they have. No, you have to make two accounts. And then when you put in guests, you go, oh, you need to make a guest account. What is the point? If you hit guests, why are you making a guest account? Yeah. I, I just I – just can't imagine that the people think that something called o- Oculus would be fun. Like that sound that sounds like a, a procedure. That's like you're going to the eye doctor. That proceeds like a, a doctor. Like oh, we're sorry. Uh, your do. Oculus is just uh, gone. But yeah. If you go to face now, it, if you go, it's been two hundred dollars. You get when one. I hear Oculus, I know something's going to get penetrated, and it's probably going to be by a doctor's finger. That's that's what I imagine in my. Yeah, I gotta head, I gotta right? touch your Oculus. Here. Anything I mean, with a, a, a college or a, an oscopy with what? If you got a couple O's in there, steer clear. I'm only going there in seventeen years because that's when you what have to I get your get prostate. Is, Checked why, out. Why is it when you go to the eye doctor and you do that machine and that blows the, blows the wind in your eye? What's the point of that? It hurts my eye. What is the point I of think, that wind? I don't. I'm trying to test something. The, the, I've never heard that. I think your doctor might have been flirting with you. You've Austin. never ever. No, the machine. They have never a got machine spit on before. <laughs> it's just air. Yo, what? Wait, you've never had the machine at the eye doctor? When have I ever got air? spit on before as a man and as a man of color? You best believe not. Oh my god. No, but I'm saying you never got the puff in your eye before. No. How good are your eyes? Are your eyes good? Yeah, my. Well, I'm blind. That's why I can't see anything. Yeah, we go to the we go to the ophthalmologist, Jared. Yeah, I'm an ophthalmologist. I remember I was I was talking to a girl on Tinder. I, I made a. I made a I made a good pickup line. I was like, um, it makes sense why you want to go to the op- you want to be an ophthalmologist because uh, um, you make my eyes light up. I think and like oh she was like oh that's so sweet. I was like yeah right. I was like we should go on a date. She was like I have a boyfriend. So um, no, she really said oh you're on that podcast. Uh, she's like oh you're on the podcast. And I was like yeah oh I'm listening right now in Texas while I'm driving on the. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we yeah she just, yeah you got my gun rack in the back. Our, our whole Texas demographic. When we do shows in Texas, they're gonna be like. Hey, remember we had a snowstorm? 
Yeah, man. Um, yeah. But yo, we we appreciate everybody for listening, man. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, let's get on to the sports because, yeah. like, this is this is a sports. This is show. our pane and burro. Okay, this is where we get it down on. Um, so we had a little oh. bit of a. Oh, I was gonna say, I mean the the new World Trade Center, like that whole thing. They they called out the Oculus too. So I don't know what they were thinking there with the names. You know, Peter, I try to lighten up the mood with sports, and you want to mention. I'm just sorry. I just, you want to mention 911. You want to no, mention. I, I didn't. I didn't make sure. Peter, Lewis. Lewis. How about, Peter you know what, knows you know too what, much. Talk, Lewis. Talk. Let us. Peter I went to the World too. Trade let Center. Let, I'm let, sorry. Let let I know too much. Twenty minutes about Auschwitz. Everybody went, really <laughs> Everyone went to the World Trade Center. They took the same picture of the same thing in world, the new World Trade Center. Yeah, so well, it's Black History Month. Let me talk about COINTELPRO for forty minutes, Peter. How about that? All right, let's do that. I could do that with you. No, I'm not doing that because Peter. No, no. Listen, it's the shortest month. Here 40 minutes disgrace because an Asian man knows more about my black history. Listen, it's, not, it's a too short. This month's too short. You're not going to have time to say it all, okay? The month, month's too short. Try, try okay. next year. Um, all right, so sports. So after the Warriors win recently, Draymond Green uh, took time in his post-game interview to talk about how there is a double standard within the NBA. Uh, he was referring to Andre Drummond, who was a player on the Cavaliers. He, he went out, stood up for the game. Uh, they benched him. Uh, he went to the back. He went. He changed to his regular clothes, and he wasn't allowed back in the game because the Cavaliers planning on trading him. They had they they in the office decided during the game that they're going to trade him, so they took him out the game, and it made him sit on the sidelines. Now Andre Drummond has been balling out. The brother has like 17 points uh, for the season, uh, averaging the game. He has 11 rebounds. He's been doing pretty good. Former All Star coming from the Pistons. You know he's still uh, producing. The former New Yorker. Shout out to him. Hmm. And as you know. With the the Cleveland was uh, part of the James Harden trade, so they got Jared Allen, who is a really key big center, a good blocker from the Nets, and they're trying to incorporate him in more. So really, they replaced Drummond with Allen. They took him out before the game started. They sat him. They told him to change his uh, get out of your attire, get out of the Cleveland uh, Cavaliers attire because we're not uh, we're trading you. You're not going to be a part of the organization. Andre, uh, excuse me, um, Draymond Green. Got on the post game interview and said that is BS. Uh, there's been a double standard in this league um, because when players have a situation and they want change, they're labeled as a holes. Uh, they're labeled as someone that's not grateful for their situation and um, that they need. To- is the camera off? No, just is that focus. Is that a focus? Okay, am I focused? Yeah, you're focused. Thank you. Looks you're good. Talking, um, you're talking about something very good. And it's just like- okay. Um, oh, yeah, so we appreciate you. Thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in, guys. Um, the one in, viewer in oh, HD. Yeah. Um, Not, but but he he really uh, Draymond Green likened it to he said uh, players in this league have to have a certain uh, way that they handle themselves. They have to be respectable. They have to really appreciate the um, environment that they're in because as soon as they want change, they're castrated and uh, as, are labeled as a bad guy. Much as James Harden was in Houston when he wanted a change, um, but when the league wants to do something to you or when they want to trade you, it's just like that cutthroat. And they can do it because business is business. And he says business is business. They said that he says that's a double standard. How do we know that's a double standard? What do we think about that, guys? It just depends who you are. Is was he is he better? Is he better than? No, uh, no. I mean, Jared Allen, younger, has more um, uh, potential. He has a better prospect. He can become a a, a workhorse in an offense, or especially a defense, because he's a prominent blocker, very prominent blocker. But Andre Drummond, ha- he hasn't been who he was, especially on the Pistons. But this season, 17 points a game, 11 rebounds, that's pretty good. He's been doing solid, especially in Cleveland where Kevin Love has been on and off because he's been hurt. I mean, Andre, uh, the uh, Colin Sexton uh, and those boys out there, they're balling. But to sit him down and not show a certain level of professionalism or uh, appreciation, to have him change and bench him and, like, oh, change out of your clothes right now and come back to the bench. But, like, someone like James Harden, who is unhappy with their situation, expresses that. The media blows it up, which, which I've uh, expressed before. Media what, needs to shut the hell what up. What team? What team is? Is the Cavaliers? They're both. They're both. In the, were they both in the Cavaliers or no? An- Andre Drummond and Jared Allen are currently on the Cavaliers. Well, it's because they're still mad that LeBron left. That's why. Who's, well, who's watching the Cavs game? <laughs> no, but it, it, it definitely. I don't think it's a, it's a double standard, but it just a business is business. Um, and it is the media. Like the media always pushes the narrative. They want they want someone to be a bad guy. They need they you need it. When you're watching sports, you need the story. You need course. people like me. What'd you say? You need people like me. <laughs> 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 
Dude, you dude, saw dude, Scarface, Jerry, dude, right? Do the I whole line. Wait, I, I wait, saw do the whole no, line. No, I saw Scarface, but Peter, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought you had a spontaneous <laughs> case of constipation, and you were trying <laughs> to say it, but you were trying to you know, compensate yourself. So, okay, I understand that was Scarface. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. No, do I just it. said do you it. Don't people like me. No, do, do the whole line. Because you could point. I can't say the whole line because I'm going to get. We're going to turn taken off the air. Okay, just say Go start. And rolling. Sound speed. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg's going to kick us right off this Facebook stream. Uh, Go ahead, Peter. Action. Oh, I'm worried about uh, Worldwide Sports Radio. Action. You'll need people like me so you can point your redacted fingers and say, that's the bad guy. <laughs> Yo, somebody, not... somebody, somebody did that monologue. In my audition technique. No class. way. Who Seriously? Did it? Who? I was yeah. in that class. He's, it was. You remember? It was the short it, little guy, it uh, Nico. He did that. The balding brother. Oh my! He did that. Yeah, he did it. <laughs> you need people like me. But his accent was. It was so bad. <laughs> I was like, in my head, I was like, is he allowed to be in here? <laughs> like I was, like in my head, I was like, is he okay? It would like, have been better if he did like a comedy monologue and it was like Larry David. You need people like me. <laughs> right, you need people like me. Dude, you can they, point your fingers. We could we could talk about business is business. I understand that, but how do we know that we have to? How do you know that you have to abide by that same principle? Because James Harden, he didn't go about it the right way. The brother didn't show up to didn't show up to a uh, training camp. Yeah, I would have just he, he asked him out. He was a little bit inflated. But I'm pretty sure there was some dialogue between him and the front office to say, listen, I'm not really happy with my situation. Can we pull some strings? Can we get some better uh, pieces? And the front office was like, oh, you got Russell. You do what you want to do. And Russell obviously went to the Wizards. But James Harden did what he had to do to get out of the, that situation. But at point blank, when you hear, oh, LeBron is unhappy with the situation in Cleveland or Kawhi is unhappy with the situation in, situation in L.A. It's like, oh, no, they should be thankful that they're in the positions that they're in. Yes, they should be thankful, but I liken it to you shouldn't be out there doing dumb stuff. We don't see it in the NBA. We see it in the NFL because NFL players, they get caught doing dumb stuff. Like, like It's like they're trying to do go for a Guinness World Record. You find out an NFL player got arrested for driving drunk with marijuana in the left hand. He's feeding his baby that he kidnapped in the right hand. He got mad guns in the back like he just had a cache for the warfare and Call of Duty. That type of stuff you shouldn't do. I think you should be responsible to hold down your spot and listen and be like, yo, I'm going to be responsible off the court. But in the court, I think you have – on the court, I think you have your responsibility to say, yo, I'm not happy. I want to change. And I don't think you should be castrated for that. And I, I, and, but when the people are salty. That's but it. The people are salty. But when the front office says, I'm not going to play you because I'm going to trade you, they have a decision and they're going to make it because, yes, they're money motivated and the players are just pieces. But – the players got to realize that they're the biggest pieces within their own realm because, like, your skill got you there and your hard work got you there. And, yes, people put you on. And that means you're not going to do dumb stuff off the court, but you still have the integrity to say what you want to do. So I think mm -hmm. I think Draymond Green has a point but when it's so cutthroat from the business side. But when you want to get cutthroat as a player, it's like, nah, you can't do that. You got to be appreciative of the position you have. No, I worked my position. I worked my ass off to get where I am right now. So I'm, I deserve it. But now if, if I go off court and I want to pull a J.R. Smith and have the Henny, the shirt off, I'm smoking the weed, and, you know, I got a girl who's possibly 17 or 18 on that borderline behind me and people want to talk about me like that, then it's like, okay, dude, peel it back. But I, 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 I really agree with Draymond Green. I think it, it is a little bit of a double standard, but money rules the world. Uh, people want to get people – those executives want to get people in the seats. We well, can't really do that right now, but you know, you want to get people to view. You want the, you want the the viewership. You want them to watch. So, well, this this doesn't just happen in sports. This happens in you know regular world. When you give someone your two weeks. You give your boss your two weeks. They're they have it on Food Network. I see people give their two weeks in, and every acts like like they're nobody. <laughs> That's what happens. You oh, got you two don't... weeks on Food Network. <laughs> Turning that elbow macaroni by the end of the day. Like... <laughs> hey, remember remember that Bobby Flay show? Yeah, edit it today today. It's just, it's just crazy. Um, people are just – people just get hurt for stupid things. Is it, What's so bad about a guy saying he wants to leave the team? Because he's not a good situation. It's like he becomes he becomes an animal, an enemy, or you don't know what you have, this, this, and that. It's like, well, dude, I mean, it happens with everything. Like, these, most of these brothers are coming from the most messed up backgrounds. Yeah. I mean, LeBron, before the age of what, 15, when people realized he was going to be a phenom, single mother life living in Cleveland, you know how bad that is, brothers and sisters? There's not a lot of light there, you know? 
but and then you get that talent, then everything changes, and then you 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 have a this life. But most of these guys coming from like Demar Derozan, and those are very hard uh, upbringings. Especially if you're not doing it in a two parent household, they, they, mm. they know the deal. They know where they're coming from. So for you to say, oh, you're you don't appreciate what you have. No, I do. I just know how much work I put in. And if I want to say something, if I want my money, which you should get, I mean, I appreciate players that you know th- cut their salary to 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 help the team win, you know, so they can get more money, so they can buy more players to, to solidify a championship. Get your money and get your happiness because you work so hard that, you know, you've been benefiting all everybody else in your life. It's time to benefit yourself. But we live in a capitalistic society, so that money is going to ring louder yeah, than sure. that person it's, complaining. Yeah, I mean, so that's what that how, is. How, would, how would you feel? Like, say say your star player was like, listen, coach, I'm leaving. Are you gonna, what are you going to say to him? Like, you need him. They need him. He's leaving at a time where they, the team needs him. I don't think it's so much the coach going to say something. I think it was the front office. It's the front office, and as soon as that word gets out, because the front office is probably going to leak that word, and everyone's like, okay, we're going to let the media castrate yeah, him cause so he could. there's a narrative against this name, and it could either influence him to make a decision that we want him to make, or we can oust him. Because now, now they have to do work. they got to replace the guy. They got, they got it. Now it's like... This whole thing, all right, we're just going to keep cruising and cruising. Now it's like, oh, you may work for us. Great. Well, when the front office wants to do something in secret, if it's locked up, and you don't know before, you don't even know before you're going to step on the court. I wouldn't be surprised that that they get someone in in a couple days and uh, it's over. You don't know before you step on the court, and you don't get that same amount of respect. But when you want to do something, oh, it has to be out there. But it's mad secretive when when they want to do something. That's why sports is one of the, like, that's where they get paid the big bucks. Like, imagine going to a job every single day and thinking, I could be replaced. Any second, you know, I can be replaced. Any second. and it happens in sports all the time. It, there's somebody always better than you. That's the biggest thing. You just got to be appreciated because most of the time these players get traded and they only get the oh, thank you, LeBron, or thank you, Kawhi, or thank you, Brian Scalabrini, for being white and red haired. And it, it's just it's it's just certain things that you can feel when you're appreciated and when you're not. And wherever I agree he goes, with, I agree with James. He's gonna be a star. Where, wherever, they, wherever he, this is just gonna drive him now. A- anytime he plays the Cavs, I do agree with Draymond. Um, let's get into this next story. I, it's a question for Peter. Uh, really, we're talking about NHL now. Mm. I'm gonna butcher this brother's name up. Okay. Had Peter read it, but uh, <laughs> Alex Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk, yeah. Alex Galchenyuk. He got traded to the Maple Leafs, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Toronto, from the Carolina. Yeah, so he... he no, yeah. uh, I want to ask okay. this question. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, so I asked the question. Since the so. 2018... <laughs> yeah, ask the question. The brother was drafted third. Third overall. Pretty good. Right, uh, right. In 2012. Since yeah. 2018. 2018, 2019 season. He's played for six different organizations. Right. Now, within the prospects of other sports, you know, when you get traded a lot, it's either that you have extreme high stock value, but you're not key to that team. Like, yeah. you, don't fit a, you don't fit a spot in that team. Or you're just dwindling and dwindling down. Now, eight years in the league, we see players that have longevity. Ovechkin, Lundqvist, you know, yeah. you, usually, you know, besides their teeth, everything is usually running correctly. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, in hockey, what do you think? Is being traded that much, six organizations since 2018, yeah, 2019, yeah, yeah. is that a sign of increasing stock uh, uh, stock, not, um, stock value as sure. a player of where, where you can fit in, or is it dwindling skill? There's a lot to it. You know, there's no one answer to it. Um, but, go, but like, yeah. you, usually, because like NBA, you see somebody floating around, like that happened to Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Isaiah Thomas, you know, he <clears> lost <throat> his sister tragically in Boston. He oh, went geez. off, and then... He went. He went to Cleveland, and he was bouncing around, and all of a sudden, he's out of the league, and now he's trying to get back to the NBA. Yeah, is it similar? Is that a similar vibe in the NHL, or what? What do you think a sign of being traded like that is? Yeah, so it depends on the situation. I mean, with there's a lot of journeyman players that are really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could even you know it's it's weird to think about when you think of such a player, but you know there's that player, Yarmir Yager. You know, played for the Penguins. He, you know, won two cups with them, and he's he. But he's been on a lot of teams since he came back from his KHL break, or uh, wherever he. I think yeah, he played in the KHL, I believe. Um, and then uh, came back, and he's just been you know bouncing around different teams. Yep. You know, now he's forty nine playing hockey on the team that he owns in the Czech Republic at home. Forty nine. Yeah, he's, giving, he's trying to be like Gordie Howe. You know, Gordie Howe played until he was like in his fifties. Played with his son, and um, they. So, I mean, in Galchenyuk's case, I mean, people are concerned about his consistency. 
And um, in the case, in, in this case here, he was on Ottawa Senators before the, mm-hmm. the capital of Canada, and he got traded to Carolina. And that he he was a million dollar deal for deal for Ottawa. I think he only scored one game. Yeah, he got he got one point, a goal. Yeah. in eight games played, he only scored in one game. Yeah, yeah eight games played, six penalty minutes, and with this season, it's a different season because it's um mm-hmm. like when you when you wave somebody and then somebody like somebody else picks him up. That means that you know uh, if if you put if that new team puts them back on waivers, the old team Ottawa has like first dibs on yep. them. So there's all those considerations going on. It's like, do we really need this guy? You mm-hmm. know, it, worst case scenario, if he doesn't work out for another team, we could always get him back. Um, but in this case, because of the whole quarantine stuff, he was just getting trades to Carolina, but he actually never left the U.S. yet. I mean, Canada. He never yeah. left, he yeah, never I entered re- U.S. yet. I read that. Yeah, so Toronto just traded Carolina for his rights, and uh, you know now he's probably going to join their team. And it's funny. Uh, so you know, but... explain that to me real quick. So he was he was playing for Ottawa, but his yeah. rights were belonged to Carolina. Yeah, I think he was waived, and then Carolina picked him up, so they have his rights. But um, oh, okay, and as soon as they as soon as they picked him up from Ottawa, yeah. they traded him to Canada. So it was like a a very uh, fast deal. Right? Yeah, it it moved very quickly. Mm-hmm. The pieces all came into place really quick. Toronto just traded Carolina for his rights, so he doesn't have to leave the country. He doesn't need 14 days of quarantining, or, or it might be 10 days now. But yeah, so that's what it is. And um, you know, I mean, he's he's been he, you know he's he's a good player. I mean, but he's just had some rough years. Rough years, as in injuries, or con- or just consistency and being good. Yeah, just playing. Just yeah, like just performing up to what people expect of him. You know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that. I mean, I was just, like, talking. I think it was Connor Sheary or something in NHL. He keeps getting – I feel like he keeps getting traded places, and so does um, Riley Sheehan and all that. Yeah. It happens. I mean, the journeyman thing, it just happens. Okay. All right. I mean <laughs> – Oh, man. Uh, oh, great. I don't did, 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 I told you something else was going to go wrong today. I already said it. Dude, the, okay, the camera just died. Everybody on the live stream. I Look tried, at my face now. It's – it's charged up. It was charged up to five. I we didn't really set up that long, so I don't know why it's dead. But um, uh, that was that was kind of like the last topic anyway. I was always interested because that's another part that I was kind of gonna allude to the Draymond Green thing is because mm. you can be so quickly um, transacted and mm. not even know about what's going down. It's like oh, you're you're a piece rather than a player, yeah. so your respect that gets granted to you it's a little bit less because the money is involved. Um. I got one more comment, and then we can get up out of here. Guys, Marcus Stroman recently said that Caught Jacob him. DeGrom is Caught the him. best pitcher in the game. What are our feelings about that? And we'll close out Austin. Right, here we go. Uh, Jacob DeGrom is a great pitcher, but he's not the best pitcher in the game. Are you kidding me? And Marcus Stroman, if you're listening to this, I miss you cat catching your bullpens. It was really fun. Uh, his dad is jack, bro. I'm like, yoked. Um, Jacob DeGrom is not the best pitcher. First of all, if you're going to even say he's the best pitcher in the NL, uh, wrong. Clayton Kershaw would even beat that. A lot of other pitchers would, would beat that. Yeah, maybe Jacob DeGrom two years ago. But he plays for the Mets. You can't be you can't be the best pitcher and play on the worst team. Yeah, he does get the most wins for, for the Mets, but it, you're still you're not the best. I mean, and, Mar- and Marcus Stroman's always had a big mouth about about uh, everything. That's why he had to leave Toronto. He was getting he was making comments about stuff, and that's why the Mets obviously took him. He, Marcus Stroman's a, a great pitcher. They're both great pitchers. But Jacob DeGrom is not the best in the game. You could say that Jacob DeGrom is maybe the smartest in the game, smarter than, than, than pitchers. Yes, because he, know, he knows where to hit spots. He knows, he knows what, what, what to throw. But to say Jacob DeGrom is the best pitcher in the game, you are totally just wrong about that. Especially why, why Peter? Why is he wrong? I mean, your guy on the Mets, your, the picture you like is Syndergaard. You like Syndergaard better. Syndergaard's better. But yeah, so. you know why Jacob DeGrom can be a great pitcher? Why? Because he plays for the Mets. When you play for the Mets, you can't be good. That's the moral of the story. Moral here. story, do not play on the Mets. <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, I, I understand what Stroman, Stroman's coming from. Uh, Jacob DeGrom's teaching Stroman how to throw new pitches. So he's going to kiss his ass. You know? Why not? He's going to say he probably is the best intellectually in the game. He, know, he knows what to do. But, Maybe his uh, brain. He's not the, uh, the best pitcher in the game. Uh, we haven't even seen him in the postseason. Damn, when was the last time they won? We even seen them play under pressure. They play in the NL. They don't mm. even hit. They hit. Who does that? 
Get a DH. Right, Peter? Yeah, I mean, he played well in, in the 2015, um, the World Series and all that. You know, they all did well. But, uh, you know, ultimately they, they couldn't beat. Um, Noah Syndergaard's better than him. Yeah, that's what you were saying. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, my sister might agree with you. Yeah, you know. get your sister on the phone right now. Quick. Yeah, get honestly. your sister on the phone. Call her right now. Call her right now. <laughs> this serious? is Grace Marie Fong Lewis, okay? <laughs> She's a huge Mets fan. And just ask her, hey, what happened to Matt Harvey? <laughs> what I mean, happened he, to he Matt got, Harvey? He got some, oh, you sent me that. Yeah, you tagged me in that comment. Mm-hmm. And then I, yeah, he got he, he signed a minor league deal with, uh, who was it? Not the Braves, was it? It might have been the Braves. I don't maybe, remember. Maybe somebody. Braves, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I got a bobblehead from one of his games, like, for cheap on Yeah, because they're free, obviously. Who's, who wants a dark night? It was years ago. Let's call years your ago. sister up. Let's see what she has to Hurry say up. about this. Okay. Then we have to go, because he has to go pick up his dad. Yes, and I, I do. go to the city. Oh, jeez. Okay. Because uh, I have my closing statements. Um, the brother has uh, 2015, 2018, 2019 uh, all-star appearances. Only a Mets fan would say Jacob DeGrom is the best in the game. <laughs> Uh, two-time All MLB First Team, 2019, 2020, so pretty recent, and two-time NLC uh, uh, Cy Young Award winner, uh, 2018, 2019. So he has the nice. consistency as of late. He's to, good to be in that uh, arena. He's um, he's great. He's a great pitcher, but to say he's the best in the game is uh, yeah. You you have, you obviously have other big names as like as a person from the outside of the baseball wor- world, uh, Kershaw, uh, Kyle. There's no way he's not good, Petey. He, he plays for the Mets. He can't be great. <laughs> this is what I'm okay? saying. This is my debate. Jacob DeGrom is not the best in the game. From someone, my bad, from You're someone fine. who's outside the baseball world, DeGrom is not the pitcher that I hear the most. I am just disappointed that Marcus Stroman the would Orioles say that he's Thank the you. best pitcher in the MLB. You're putting someone over yourself. You're supposed to have this maximum confidence. And you know Marcus Stroman has confidence because he is the only player in the MLB who pitches with a do-rag on. And he's also you, from Long Island. You, you, he's, yeah, I'm going to get to that. You're the only <laughs> player in the MLB that pitches well with a silky on. You're me to tell me you're swimming under that hab. You got waves for days, and you're going to give up the best pitcher uh, ac- accommodation to somebody who's not you? Get the hell out of here, Marcus Stroman. That's what happens when you go to Patchogue, Medford, and you don't have too many black people uh-huh. in your school, and you get made fun of for wearing that do-rag. You think you're not, you, you, you're not worth anything. No. Marcus Stroman, if you don't say that you're the best pitcher in the MLB with the best waves, I don't know what to tell you, brother. Don't give that up to no Jacob DeBrom. He could be your mentor, of course, but say that's you, all right? Brother throwing with a silky on. I have never seen I have never seen a, a pitcher do that and say, "Oh, I'm not the best." No, brother, you going out there with a with a blue silky every day to pitch. No, say it's you. Say it's you. That's that's what happens when you go to Pat Chalk Medford. Shout out to Jair because he lives in both. All right, <laughs> he li- he lives literally in both towns. Not one, it's not the other. It's both towns. Don't let them fool you, people. All right, but that Marcus Stroman, uh, you the best. Okay, you say that you don't give that to nobody else, did especially your, when you wear a do rag. Your sister pick up? She's a huge no, Mets fan. She didn't pick up. Course, no, she course. might have known. She might have known. She might be listening. Who knows? But smart baseball people. I am smart baseball. He's not the best pitcher in the game. Yeah, they don't give him run support. Of course they don't give him run support. This is the Mets. They never hit. They don't give anybody support. This brother is swimming. He has 360 under that baseball cap. Oh, I'm not the best pitcher. <laughs> yes, you. I, I bet you the brother from, from Freeport, he would say something different. No, no, nah, I'm the best. I would say, okay, I would say, like, all right, sure, he's maybe the best pitcher in the NL. I'll give him that. But that's also the National League, and they suck. It's all about the American League. I, I didn't Justin realize. Verlander's better. Uh, Garrett Cole's better. Max Scherzer is way better. Uh, Jacob Degrom is on the Mets, so he cannot be that great. You think Syndergaard's better? Since Syndergaard's better. Syndergaard's better on his own team. Syndergaard has yeah. also better hairs. Once Jacob Degrom <laughs> cut that uh, that hair, that's yeah, when he, he was like, like Samson. He like, yeah, he looks like, like a Samson. dad now. Yeah. He looks it's, like it's a dad has to start paying child support. <laughs> Call yeah. your sister one more time. Try one more time. I didn't realize this, but he's actually Strowman's one of six players, six pictures shorter than five ten to make a start in the MLB in the twenty first century. He's also I caught his bullpen and he he's good, but the, a girl, he's, he's strong. There's a girl in my college that said she uh, oh, no. spent spent the night with Marcus nice. Stroman, and she kept on bragging about it. And I was like, "Word!" So I, I tried to go on a date with her, but she said she didn't like black eyes. So I was like, "Ah, go digger!" But um, Chris Marie, listen, oh, uh, you want to comment? Oh, no, on just Stroman? put on speaker. Put on speaker right you now. You want to comment? Well, I'm not putting on speaker yet, but do you want to comment on Marcus Stroman saying? That DeGrom is the best pitcher in the MLB. In the MLB. Uh, and after 
Put on speaker. Wait, okay. Uh, Why say that again. Miss that? I said it's accurate. Who? That what? That uh, Devon's the best pitcher in the MLB. No question. I mean, no question. He plays for the Mets. He can't be the best pitcher on the Mets. He's not even the best pitcher on the Mets. I don't know what you just said because I just turned my car on. Who's better, Noah Syndergaard or Jacob Degrom? What? Noah Syndergaard or Jacob Degrom? Who's better? Kill one, marry one. <laughs> I okay, so I think that is she getting back over right now it's Degrom clip? just because Syndergaard's been out and he's like rehabilitating, and I haven't what? really seen how he's doing. Why yet, is Jacob but... Degrom the best pitcher in the game? Why? I don't know what Austin's saying. He doesn't. Why, why is Degrom the it's best? It's okay, pitcher? Grace. Nobody understands what Austin says when he gets excited. <laughs> A true facts. No way, he is not the best. Yeah. In so the game. what? What makes him the best picture in the MLB? Degrom. He's been very consistent. Um, I don't know. He's just been very consistent in his work, and like he puts his all out. And unfortunately, the team's not always behind him, especially like last season. But I don't know. I think that if it wasn't for like last season, he probably would have gotten another Cy Young. Well, he didn't. Because you want to know why? Because he's not the best in the game. All right. <laughs> there, Max Scherzer is better than him. Garrett Cole is better. Honestly, Justin Verlander is better than him. Peter, honestly, like, all I hear from Austin's side is, like, yelling. Like, I <laughs> well, that's all, that's all, that's all he does. It's pretty accurate. That's all he does. I don't Jacob know DeGrom. If there's any words coming out now. He's saying Garrett, Garrett Cole is better. Uh, Justin Verlander. Verlander. All right. See? see? Look, a Met fan. Look, even your own people are like, that. oh, you know what? You're right. All right. I... <laughs> typical, typical Met fans. They get they 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 go they go for their they go for their it's team, just, and then when there's evidence, they go, okay, maybe you're right. So much. It's like he's yelling into the void. Or something. <laughs> hey, what happened to Matt Harvey? What happened to Matt Harvey? <laughs> he's talking to. He's at he's going to Orioles. He got signed <laughs> by the Harvey. Orioles. Okay. Oh, isn't he? Wait, where did he go? Again? Orioles. Yeah. Orioles. That's it is. Minor league. Minor Minor league. So yeah, for really Yeah, yeah, yeah. First. He was a good pitcher when he was on the Mets, and unfortunately, he couldn't bounce back, and then there was good all the dark night. Stuff, so, I don't know. He was still a good pitcher when we had him. All right, so the, the consensus... The best Sorry, what were you saying? I said it didn't end in the best way. Yeah, yeah so the consensus is that the four of us, including you, are going to a Brooklyn Cyclones game when they open up again. Who in the I, hell said that? Yeah, I'm not going to. Not, I don't want to sit by any of you guys. Why? Why? Are you, are you just, Chris? I just don't. You're the bestest sister in the world. Why don't you want to sit by your brother? Because that means that I have to pay for your stuff. No. Okay, first of all, Grace, don't disrespect me. Okay, <laughs> I have a 9 to 5 job that I work. Okay, so don't act like you're not going to sit next to me because I'm going to freeload all. I don't even know you, lady. All right, so don't even try to flex <laughs> on me. Chinese New don't Year. even try to flex on you me. Her, Think I'm met... about to be like, yo, Grace, go handle my hot dog. I'm not going to do that to you, okay? I struggle at Amazon for that hot dog, okay? So I don't want to hear anything Grace, from you. If you want to pay for me, I'm fine with that. Honestly, if you want to pay for me, you can. You can pay whatever you want from me. Okay, all that sounded like was like, Man, when like Steve Carell yells loud noises, we get it, we get it. You just finished your yeah, office. we get, we get it. it. You have we get it. You, you bought, you bought yeah. Peacock. Austin's, right, Austin's Austin right. Japanese you alcohol right. messed up your you eardrum. Okay, you're one of five people that. in America to buy Peacock. Congrats. Listen, right. listen, congratulations. Listen, okay. We're out of right. time, guys. We are out of time. Uh, Grace, thank you for for talking. We appreciate anything you want to say to the people. You want to say anything for the people? Uh, let's go, Matt. Oh my God! Hang up the phone. <laughs> Hang up the phone. Thank you, Grace oh, Spring. Typical Thank you Mets. Much. You can Thank say you. anything you want to the world. What do you say? <laughs> Let's go Mets. <laughs> typical Mets fan. <laughs> typical Mets fan. Welcome to How You Know, Mets fan. Right, I think that's it for us because uh, it's 301. Jared's camera died. I got to go to the city. He's got to go do Amazon. Uh, Peter, I don't know what he's doing today, but he's probably be late to whatever he's doing. Uh, but yeah. Hey, don't forget to follow us on iPhone. Don't download the app. WWSRN on iPhone. What, Peter? What? Nothing, Austin. What? Look, what? 
What? Nothing. Oh, say Nothing. it. Keep going. No. No. no keep Peter going. is no. mad no. like keep a girlfriend. Keep going. Peter, keep what going. happened? Peter? No. Keep nothing. Nothing Peter, happened. Peter, what happened? Nothing happens. Peter, nothing what happens. happened? Nothing happens. Nothing. I know too much. Nothing happens. Oh, okay. Okay. Whatever. All right. So like I was saying, <laughs> uh, WWSRN on iPhone. WWSRN on iPhone. Worldwide Sports Radio Network on Android. Worldwide Sports Radio Network on Android. Follow me on the gram. Austin Titel at Austin Titel at Austin Titel. We got Jared. Jared, if I could show Jared's camera. Be cool. uh, Jay Harvin 15 on the gram, Snapchat, TikTok. You know what it is, man. We going up with it. Come back here Wednesday. We're going to have the same foolishness, the same curiosity coming to same you. Same bash mat. For our knowers, man. We're on this wave, man. So keep up with us. Thank you for tuning in. Peter. See you next week. See you next uh, week, people. Peter, you should have said, let's go Mets. <laughs> let's go Mets. <laughs> That's everybody. Let's go Islanders. Hey, they're doing well. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are doing well. Well, this is a sports podcast. We don't talk about it. I don't know. They're doing well, but they don't even know where they can play next year. So. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Hey, they're going them. to Belmont, man. Going oh, to Belmont. They're going to Belmont, so is the UBS. weekend. Hey, good place. It's looking really good so far. But that's next year. I'll All take right. you to a game, Jared. Let's just hope it won't mess up. Traffic on the belt, because it's already <laughs> horrible already. You're going to have a puck hitting your windshield. There's going to be a horse <laughs> right behind you. All right? Yeah, no, you're Thank right. Thank you for listening to it. Thank you for know. listening, guys. We love y'all, man. Peace out. Goodbye. It, it, it's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network.